Today's content is from Healthline.com. What you need to know about the medicinal benefits of the toothache plant. Now they say here the toothache plant is a flowering plant native to Brazil and it has many names. Electric Daisy. The one that really kind of gets me is Eyeball Plant. Jambu. Paracress. Okay, the plant is related to the daisy, but it looks very different. It has round yellow flowers with dark red spots in the center. These flowers, often called buzz buttons or Szechuan buttons, are actually clusters of many tiny flowers. They say you can find the toothache plant in tropical and subtropical regions including Northern Australia, Africa, Sri Lanka, and Southern and Central India. Traditionally, the plant is used for its medicinal benefits. Some of these effects have been proven by science. Look at that. It's commonly used for, just like the name, toothaches, okay? But it's also used for other issues like inflammation and gastrointestinal problems. In some parts of the world, the toothache plant is used in food. It makes sense if it has to do with inflammation and gastrointestinal issues. Okay, it has a strong bitter taste that adds a unique, unique flavor to dishes. Now we're going to get to the name of it, right? Toothaches, proven benefits of this toothache plant. As the name suggests, the toothache plant is used to ease toothache pain. When chewed, it has a numbing effect on the mouth. This local anesthetic effect is due to an ingredient in it, uh, which is the plant's main active ingredient, okay? And I'm going to make an attempt to say the name, Spilenthal. Spilenthal, okay, is the name of the plant's main active ingredient. It also has plant compo- compounds called flavonoids. The flavonoids reduce, uh, let me see, pasta glandis prostaglandins which interfere with your perception of pain prostaglandins hmm, okay now the toothache plant is used to treat inflammation of the mouth um, the condition can be painful making it hard to eat or drink the may the pain relieving effect of the splendenthal may help They said in a 2008 animal study found that splendenthal decreases the enzymes involved in inflammation, although more recent human studies are needed, and it says 2013 review suggests its anti-inflammatory effects may just help with this inflammation of the mouth. Now the next ailment is dermatitis that it addresses. Okay, due to its anti-inflammatory properties, the toothache plant could relieve dermatitis. This condition occurs when the skin becomes inflamed and swollen. In a 2019 animal study, uh, specifically examined this particular benefit we're talking about. The researchers found that the splenenthal suppresses migration of inflammatory cells, creating an anti-inflammatory effect. This decreases the swelling that is obviously seen in dermatitis. The next benefit of the toothache plant is it acts as a diuretic. The tropical plant is also a natural diuretic. Okay, Diuretics help your body to get rid of excess fluid by making you pee more, right? This effect was proven in 2016 study which found that splenenthal increases urine output. The researchers determined that splenenthal uh, targets cellular activities in the kidneys involved in urinate, uh, urine production and water reabsorption. Another benefit is dry mouth. It has a lot of benefits. If your, uh, your salivary uh, glands don't make enough sa- saliva, you have what's called dry mouth. I don't well, let me not say, uh, not yet, dry mouth, I, 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 no, it can lead to bad breath and dry cracked lips. The bitter flavor of the toothache plant can help. Its bitter taste, oh, okay, it stimulates. I can think when you eat something bitter, 
make sense. Its bitter taste comes from the splenothal, which can stimulate your salivary glands. Makes sense. And Sri Lanka, the flower extract of the toothache plant, is used for this purpose. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. 2017 study also found that toothpicks with splenothal, oh, on them, okay, or in them, increases salivation in people with dry mouth. to toothache uh, plant uses. Traditionally, every part of the plant is used, so every part of the plant is used as in herbal medicine. The flowers, the leaves, and the stems may be consumed raw, cooked, dried, or powdered. In food, the plant may be used as an herb or main ingredient. When cooked, the leaves become mild and are usually tossed in a nice salad. The roots, the flowers, and the leaves can also be used to make extracts. Okay, so now we're going to get into where to get toothache plants, seeds, or products. Depending on where you live, the toothache plant might be hard to find. Your best bet is to visit a nursery or find an online retailer that uses tropical plants and sells uh, tropical plants. If you prefer medicinal products that contain the toothache plant, check out places like this. Health markets, apothecaries. Uh, herbal medicine shops, vitamin and supplement stores, okay? And then they said that the toothache plant might be known under other names or be labeled as, hold on, <laughs> I'm going to butcher it again, splenanthes, spillanthes, spill, spillanthes. I'm going to spell it now, S-P-I-L-A-N-T-H-E-S. Okay, so you might not just see it listed underneath um, that particular toothache plant. Okay, and then they give a link for people who want to take it further. It says, shop for medicinal plants and products connected to the toothache plant as well as seeds online. And then you have something that you can actually click on. Now, they do talk about growing it. So I'll read that for some of you that may be interested in that. I'm going to read it to you now. Okay, so how to grow it. If you like to grow a toothache plant at home, follow these instructions. Use high quality, well-draining soil. Start seeds indoors, just like with um, with the other um, the soap board plant as well. Start indoors. They suggest that heavily. Start seeds indoors four to six weeks before the last frost. Press into soil without covering, then water. Keep the seeds moist until they germinate. Transplant uh, young plants outside into 12-inch pots after last frost has passed. If planting in a garden bed, space them at least 12 inches apart. Water the plants every few days and avoid overwatering. You can expect your toothache plants to bloom between August and October. You were just listening to Teachable Moments with April Podcasts. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I invite you to connect with us on our social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest. I also encourage you to become a paid subscriber. In-